back here, final segment. Yeah. And we're talking about EJ Liddell. No relationship to Chuck Liddell or Mike Liddell, <laughs> I'm told. Thankfully. Yeah. Um, so this is the guy I was just looking up on. I, I have all these different, like, when we do these shows, the, like mock drafts or what have you. Kevin O'Connor. Um, has him 21st to Denver. Oh, interesting. So, so there you go. And I love this, the uh, shades of, right? You never want to say he's a true comp. It's a shades of, yeah, right? Yeah. Paul Millsap. Well, he's 100% right. Um, EJ Liddell is Paul Millsap 2.0. He's only 6'5 and a half, though. He's 6'7. All right. Yeah, that might be, That'd be in shoes or something. Yeah, 6'7 yeah. in shoes. Uh, he's got a long wingspan as well. Let me see if I can find it here. 6'11 six, six, wingspan, it's on there, right there beautiful. Yeah. Oh, look at those draft cards, oh, yeah. They are beautiful graphics, man. You know I hate to compliment Eric, right but I, sometimes I do. Yeah. Uh, but EJ Liddell, yes, his draft range is middle first. He could definitely be available at 21. A lot of mocks have him going in you know, the early 20s right now. Uh, he's a junior out of Ohio State, a six foot seven forward, 21 years old. He is a ridiculous shot blocker. Um his, really? his block percentage is off the charts. He had an 8.5 block percentage last season. That like blows Tari Eason's block percentage out of the water. Really? Like he blocks a ton of shots and he's a really versatile defender. He flirted with coming out of the draft and uh declaring last year. He went back to school, became a more versatile defender, and has improved his stock. But um defense, shot blocking, motor. He also projects as a good shooter as well. So there's a lot to like about EJ Liddell. And the Paul Millsap comp is 100% right. So Paul Millsap to me, I mean, he's a good help side defender. He's not a good shot blocker. I mean, he could like. Right, yeah. Is, so do you know this? Honestly, this is like a real specific question. But like Paul Millsap is a shot blocker in that he meets people at the top and it's the block that you like fight for. And then there's the like Dwight Howard where you block it out of the air into the state. Like does he, is he at a. That type of rim protector, a volleyball slot? He has some violent blocks. He has some violent blocks? Yeah, some okay. blocks that go against the backboard and bounce out to the three-point like line. Like, all of Jokic's blocks could be categorized as steals. Yeah, yeah. Steal block, like, yeah. whatever. You know, 50-50. <laughs> Just switch off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, he has some explosive blocks. Okay. I, I mean... Is he like a super athlete? That's what's interesting. I'm just looking at these measurables. Even at 6'7", I'm like, okay, that's... You know, he's not short, but he's not big. <sighs> he's... You're playing in the Big Ten. A you got sneaky some big athlete. He, he's a sneaky athlete. Yeah. Um, the, the reason I put Paul Millsap as the comp is because you watch him on offense, and he plays a lot like Paul Millsap. He's kind of got an old school game, an old man game. <laughs> likes to operate out of the post. Kay. Likes to you know put his guy in the mix from the mid range, jab step, really uh, shot fake, get to the rim. But he's really efficient. I mean, he shot forty eight percent from the field, thirty seven. And a half percent from three, seventy six point five percent from the line. He's going to be a good shooter at the next level. He rebounds really well too. He's definitely more of a four five than a three four though. Um, really? Yeah. A six seven four five. Yeah. Okay. He, he's, so he's, he's, a, he's weird. He's, sto man. he's stocky and strong, and all right. Yeah. Uh, but he does have a six eleven wingspan and get this a thirty eight inch max vert. Okay. Okay. He's 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 just a, a unique prospect, I think. And uh, that makes him a little interesting. So I know another thing that I'm seeing here on all these different ones, great motor, that he yep. just plays extremely hard and he doesn't really tire, which for guys like honestly, when you talk about the body type, the Paul Millsap S body type, a lot of times your motor guys are like a Kenneth Fareed or Montrez Harrell. They like have this like explosive body mm -hmm. or something when you're a bit of a more of a, a he's not stocky. I'm just saying he's not like a skinny waisted guy. Um you know, seeing that, like, that's kind of interesting to me. That's a, like a, a football, a linebacker with a great motor. Yeah, he's just classic Big Ten guy. <laughs> he's yeah. a classic Big Ten guy. You're, you're classic <laughs> Big Ten big man. Um, chiseled, uh, experienced, tough, strong chin. So, you know, if you were to say, like, who who is probably advocating most in that building for this guy, who would you say? Oh, Calvin Booth. You think Calvin Booth this is a Calvin Booth guy? Well, I feel like Calvin Booth probably sees a little of himself in E.J. Liddell. I, <laughs> I like the idea that every front office person just drafts themselves. I don't know. <laughs> just I have no idea. Why, who do you think? I was thinking Michael Malone. He okay. almost sounds more of like yeah. a tough, yeah. hard nose, plays hard, does going to do the block shots, you know, yeah. dive on the floor kind of guy. I could see that for sure. Uh, he's definitely going to play hard. He's definitely going to bring it defensively. 
He, he knows how to play. He's not going to make a ton of mistakes. Here's an interesting note on Liddell. Ohio State played Duke at the very beginning of the season. He held Paolo Bancaro to 14 points on 4-14 shooting in a win over Duke at the beginning of the season. It was one of his best defensive games of the year, and that really, I think, put him on the radar of scouts and being like, oh, we saw this guy last year. He went back to school, and he's way better this right. year. And that's the thing. When a player goes back to school – Oftentimes there's a reason, right? Like, and for him, there was two things. One of them was perimeter defense. Like, you're more of an interior defender. Go out and become more of an both versatile defender. And then the other one was his three point shot. And some of this is just linear. Like, the difference between yeah. a 20 and 21 year old is big. So some of this you kind of expect. But if you look at the three point shot, you know he goes from taking basically 2.8 per game and shooting 34 percent to all of a sudden taking 3.8 per game and shooting 37 and a half percent. That's a noticeable. That's a big increase in attempts and a big increase in percentage and that kind of follows a three-year trend so i look at that and it's small enough sample sizes um you know we're talking about a total of 123 threes like college is the thing that's hard about scouting college is the sample sizes are low mm -hmm. but it's a noticeable enough jump that you think okay you went back to do that both of those things you said you were going to do you proved one you know the de defense against some of the league's best sort of like perimeter forwards and then or the, the NCAAs yeah. and then the shooting you see it in the numbers reflected of okay he's become a better three-point shooter yeah you love the improvement year to year but there's also not one year where there's an outlier you see that right. with a lot of guys where oh they were a 20 percent three-point shooter as a freshman then they were a 42 percent three-point shooter as a right. sophomore then they went back down to 33 percent as a junior what kind of shooter is that guy really E.J. Liddell, he goes from 19% to 34% to 37.5%. is linear. It's, yeah. it's pretty much what you would expect year over year over year. And really all his stats went up pretty linear. Even his field goal percentage, 46.5 to 47.5 to 49. Right. There, there's not like a big jump where you look at it, look at it and you say, okay, is, is there some noise here? Is this not really who he is? Uh, he steadily improved every single season. And then... What about I, I know like some of the basketball IQ stuff, they say he's a good, not great passer, but he's good enough. If he's not your primary, he can kind of keep a system moving. He's smart, knows how to play. So I like those things. But is he a project? Does he play for the Nuggets next year if they took him at 21? He's definitely more the more one of the more NBA ready guys in this range, I think. So and then the, the question I asked was we go through all of these forwards, him and Zeke Naji, are they compatible alongside each other? <sighs> That's tough. They're, they're like different players in a sense. If if Zeke Naji could be a five, I still have hope, have hope that he could be a five. I still believe that he can develop into you know a better rebounder, just more of a, a natural five. I think he. I, I'm holding out hope that he could. Then there's the fit there, but I mean E.J. Liddell is pretty much a four, like a four, and that might be it. He's not a three. He's not a five. I don't think. Yeah, mm. I don't think. I mean, he, is that a big knock on him? I haven't really seen that, but I would think so. Jermichael Green is kind of this, yeah. right? Like Jermichael Green. He's a four. He's definitely not a five. He's not a three. Right. Yeah. I think EJ e. Liddell is definitely a four. It's about it. And then the three point shot. I mean, improvement every year, young enough, but I don't think like a natural knockdown. No, he's not going to be Zeke, but okay. I think he'll be a plus shooter. But a plus shooter. Yeah. Maybe from the corners. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. I don't know how I feel about this guy, especially it's funny, man. This is like um, always, you know, you ever used to watch the show House Hunters back in the day and they'd show the one that's like well below their market. Like we have one million to spend. You show them the lower, lower. Then you show them the 1.5 million. And oh, like yeah. It has everything. We've done a lot of the $1.5 million houses. Like where's he going? Eighth. Like, well, all right. <laughs> yep. This is where we're like what's in the range and it's. I'm not underwhelmed. I'm he's intriguing, but I'm just it's a little bit more where when I think about how is this next guy that Nuggets bring in going to get opportunity? How is he going to develop? And I look at that and I go, I don't know if he's a piece that helps you win a championship next year. And if he's not, that means he's behind likely the guys that are already on the roster including Azik Naji. Yeah. And and so even developmentally, I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm really firm on this. I don't think you ever want to draft for need. I, like, I, I really don't. Even when, when you're a good team like the Nuggets are, even when you're a contender, I really think you just want to take yeah. the best player available unless you know that player is like a center. Here's, the th here's, the, here's where I'll disagree with you because I agree if it's like we only need one thing 
and we're drafting for that one. Denver needs versatile defenders. So I do feel like one way you're going to find those is in the draft. So it's not that you just need you're finding the one. It's that you need to bring guys in that can build around. Like if you think about it, I think Jamal Murray's here for more than one or two years. I think he's here for at least three years. I think Jokic is here for at least three years. So now you're starting to think it's you're drafting for need for those guys. Mm-hmm. Even though it's not a specific one spot, you're just, hey, does he fit that? Kind of. Kind of. Yeah. Kind of. Kind of. He might, he might be more of an Aaron Gordon replacement down the line. Yeah. Not a bad thing to have. It's just it's it's a lot a little bit of ways away. All right.